and I'm late. <laughs> Got into a little Indian trance thing. I don't think my mic's on, is it? Um, so good morning, everybody. Here's Melissa. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was um, great music, great arrangement. Oh, in case ever. Oh, yeah. I, I, Tell us. I just came up with it out of my oh. head, and I haven't practiced. Um, I have a lot going on. I have a theater gig, so that's why I'm dressed kind of weird, all in black, <laughs> <laughs> right after church. So. Well, we're glad you're here, and that was that was amazing. I really loved it. Thank you. So, welcome everyone to our live stream service this morning. We are a diverse and inclusive spiritual community offering a positive path to spiritual living. I am so glad to see smiling faces on this cold day. We were expecting, I came home from Detroit yesterday and expecting icy streets today, so I'm glad that we are nice and safe. And of course, we have Vicki out in California. I hope you're online this morning, Tennessee, Michigan, Chicago. Welcome, everybody, um, and thanks for being here. And our vision is that is a world transformed by spiritually centered people awakened to the oneness of all. And now, uh, Miss Catherine will light the Christ candle. Ah, let us pray. Dear Mother, Father, God, we thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful weekend that we have embraced and shared and given thanks for all the blessings that flow through you to us. We are grateful for this spiritual community that we can gather in person or be, be a live stream, knowing that we are all connected in this sacred space, in your sacred space, surrounded always by your love, by your hope, and by the many blessings that you give to us each and every day. In your name, amen. And now the children will come forward, but we have just one beautiful young adult, and she is going to do the children's blessings for all of us. We, I ask you to rub your hands together. We feel the energy of children everywhere. We feel the energy of children everywhere. And hold them close to our hearts. And hold them close to our hearts. Thank you. And now back to you. Okay, yeah. I thought so. Um, so I have some kind of piano dyslexia, and hymns are really tough for me. So I want you to all sing along and support me. But we love to sing hymns, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so and this is one of my favorites. So uh here we go. Oh come oh come ye men you love and some captive Israel that mourns lonely exile here until the sun in God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, the man you shall.
envy, strife, and quarrel cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Come to Thee, O Israel. That's beautiful. You sound like 50, 75 people, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So um, today is the first Sunday of Advent, um, and so we are going to celebrate that today by lighting our Advent wreath. The Advent wreath was most likely first used as a Christian devotion in the Middle Ages. The design was borrowed from the customs of pre-Christians, mostly Germanic and Scandinavian cultures, who used candles and greenery as symbols during the dark and dead of winter to represent light and life. The Advent wreath is a circular evergreen wreath with four to five candles. The candles symbolize the light of Christ coming to the world. The evergreen symbolizes re the renewal of Christ and the circular shape symbolizes the completeness of God. Lighting a candle is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. As we light a candle each week, we participate in a sacred consciousness journey towards Christmas, the day of joy and celebration. This week, Martha and Catherine will be lighting the first Advent calendar, which represents the spiritual consciousness of hope and faith an invitation into a higher oneness with our own Christ consciousness. In scripture reading from Romans chapter 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And our affirmation together, I am open to the uplifting power and presence of God's infinite spirit flowing through me to light the way with hope and inspiration. And now I'm going to read from the Daily Word. Many of you know that we have a publication in Unity that has been around for many, many years. Um, and it's a daily read that I actually get uh, via email. You can have a subscription. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be able to read it each and every day. So today, for Sunday, November 28th, the word, words for today is hope and faith. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God, my belief in goodness of the world, others, myself, and God begins with hope. Maybe hope is all I can muster after a period of doubt or disappointment. As I feel hopeful, I begin to believe that new possibility, possibilities and better outcomes are available to me. My hopeful feelings lead to faith a certainty of goodness I could only sense before the actual nature of life. With faith, I now direct my thoughts towards goodness, wholeness, and my heart's desires. With gratitude for my awakening, I use faith to dismantle doubt and limitation. I hold only the best thoughts for myself. I know and feel in the depths of my soul that the good I desire is already mine. With unwavering faith and deep gratitude, I claim it now. And from Psalms chapter 62, verse 5, For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. And the words for today is hope and faith. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. Now to prepare for meditation. This is one of the things that I 
love about Unity is that we do a prayerful meditation at each service. And some of you may know I have been using the Unity prayer meditation that they put together. It comes out the beginning of each month, and it can be used throughout the whole month. Susan puts it in the newsletter the beginning of the month. You can also find it on our website and online. So as we celebrate the birth of Christ consciousness this month, divinity inherent in humanity, we celebrate Jesus, who embodied divinity and demonstrated a way of living based in spiritual principles. We focus on peace, light, and life within us and all around us as we begin this time of prayer. So please settle in to your chair, whether here or at home. Relax your shoulders. Take a couple of deep breaths in, releasing those tensions, releasing the busyness of the days past, of the hours ahead, of the days ahead. Being right here, right now, in this moment, in your sacred space, in our sacred space. Place your hands down for grounding, up for receiving. A couple of deep breaths in as we center and welcome that true spirit coming into our heart, giving us hope, giving us faith, leading, leading us forward today and always. Divine peace is my path and my true nature. God is the source of peace within my mind. Peace is born in me. Centered in peace, I know I am one with God and peace is truly mine. Peace is the foundation from which I think constructively and act intentionally. Peace is my foundation, and as we hold this peace, we begin in the silence. I follow the star and respond to the light of divine wisdom in the way of wise ones through the ages I follow the illuminating light of divine wisdom in any time of need I make an inward journey and dis discern how to proceed day and night the star shines and lights my way. I live in wisdom, holding this wisdom in the silence.
God is the flow of life within my body and being. I affirm God is my life in circumstance. For every concern about health and well-being, I fill my mind with knowledge of God, of life, permeating my body and being. Life is born in me in every moment of spiritual awareness. I know God is my life, and we hold that true life in the silence. I rejoice in abundant possibilities. Joy and celebration are on my mind as I consider how blessed I am. I rejoice in the continual flow of abundance born in me with every thought of appreciation. The desires of my heart are fulfilled as I realize all things are possible because God is my source. I rejoice in joy and celebration, the continual flow of abundance. We celebrate, we celebrate and hold this in the silence. The Christ born in me is a gift to the world. The Christ, my divine identity, is my true nature. The Christ is born in me in my realization that I am alive as a gift to the world. As I celebrate the birth of Jesus, the great teacher of Christ consciousness, I celebrate my growing capacity to be a gift, a light in the world. And as I hold this prayer box filled with those requests, of people, of situations. We hold these so dear, knowing that as they are written, as they are spoken, we lift them up and they are received. As we think a thought, it is a prayer and it is received. I bless this box and all the requests in it we all lift this up knowing that the prayers are answered. And now I invite you to speak aloud the names of those that you hold in prayer, of situations that you hold, and as you say their name, vision them being given and received. My sweet family, far and near. 
sweet Martha, Unity Spiritual Center, Reverend Sandy, Unity Family, those in hopelessness, we lift them up. Those without, we see them filled with abundance. Bob Dunbar. And as we have lifted these prayers up, we know that all is good and all is well. We conclude this time in joy and celebration, knowing that we are infinitely blessed and infinitely protected within divine order. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. Behold the star, the wondrous star that leads to Christ in you. The wise have followed from afar and found the promise true. Oh, let the bells in rapture ring and peace its joy in for he has come who shall be king, the Christ in every heart. Upon the day his love and free that lights the inner flame. And we who walked as in a dream Awake to know his name, for he is here whom we adore. Oh, happy thought and sweet, forever and forevermore, the Christ in you I grieve. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Outstanding. You found your groove. <laughs> wow. Um, I am really excited about the person giving our message today. Many of you know her. We have not seen her in, what, Susan, a couple of years because of COVID, because she is on the road uh, serving our country. So today, our message is being delivered via video with our one and only Melanie Miller. And we miss you very much, and here she is. Good morning. It is so nice to be with you this morning. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Melanie Miller. And I've been involved with Unity since around 2004 or 5. I can't remember the exact year, but I know it was when my daughter was very young. And so how I got introduced to Unity was through a friend who introduced me to Conversations with God books by Neil Donald Walsh. And he told me the closest thing he knew of in the area to the teachings in that book was a Unity church. So. When my daughter was at an age where it seemed appropriate to introduce her to some spiritual teachings, I found the local Unity Church, and I've been here ever since. Uh, with the exception of about the last year and a half. So um, I'm actually helping with COVID vaccination and testing support up in Michigan. Um, I'm on an active duty job right now helping with that. And so I haven't been there in a while, probably since July of last year. And I miss everyone. And if I haven't met you yet, I look forward to meeting you when I'm able to be back at home <clears throat> in South Bend on a regular basis. So we're transitioning from a whole series of talks about Thanksgiving, gratitude, and now we're transitioning into Advent. And with today being the first Sunday of Advent, um, the theme for today is hope. So think about the word hope. Um, I like to run to the dictionary. And Merriam-Webster defines hope this way. Hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation. You think about Christmas coming and you think about children and children definitely know how to cherish a desire with anticipation. I would say excited anticipation. However, in everyday adult living, we seem to think about hope only in times of despair, um, especially during a pandemic. Um, it's been a very rough time. I'm sure everyone has a story of how hope went up and down and um, uh, we do often look for it when things seem hopeless. Uh, we don't think about hope when everything's going well, uh, we're in a really happy mood, or um, we're surrounded with love and laughter and enthusiasm. We don't think about hope during those times. Um, I would like to quote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He has a wonderful hope uh, quote about hope. And he says, only in the darkness can you see the stars. And that is so beautiful because we, we absolutely cannot see the gorgeous night sky full of stars without that darkness. And hope operates in a similar way. We only look for it. We only look for those stars of hope when things are dark. So I'm going to tell you a story of hope that includes a song about hope. When I was in my sophomore year of high school, tragedy struck one night when we had a blizzard. It was December 1st of 1987. And there were two accidents with semis that evening. Um, in one uh, accident, my great aunt was killed. And that was um, a very tragic thing in our family. And in another semi-accident, I lost a classmate and her mother. They were killed in a separate semi-accident the night of that blizzard. 
and she was a fellow piano student. We went to the same piano teacher. I didn't know her very well, but I can tell you that when we all went to school the next morning, and we learned the news that morning right before school, uh, it was absolutely the most dreadful day of school I had ever had. Our first class that morning was choir class. There was a song we had been working on. It was a Christmas song. It was not familiar to us other than um, it was kind of interlaced with a popular Christmas song, but the main melody was new to us. I remember what the sheet music looked like. I remembered some of the words, and as we tried to sing that song that morning, looking for hope, um, we, we struggled. We struggled a lot. Um, we couldn't sing, and yet we couldn't not sing. Um, we seemed to gravitate toward just keeping up with the routine and uh, reaching for music, which people often do in times of darkness. Some of these lyrics, as we kept thinking about the accident, uh, just kept tying it. Just kept tying our minds to what must have happened the night before. Lyrics like, cold are the people, winter of life. And then other lyrics like, frozen in the snow, lie roses sleeping. That was some heavy stuff that morning. When we got to those words, we really couldn't go on. And finally, the choir teacher just stopped us and we weren't, we were stuck. We were stuck. So fast forward through into adulthood, and uh, I would think about that song every once in a while, but I forgot things about that morning. I forgot things about that song, even though we memorized it for a concert. Um, it was very difficult to memorize. And I forgot the name of the song. And 17 years later, I found myself as a choir accompanist. I had moved to the Indiana area from northern Michigan. I had just had a five-year hiatus from music. I had done nothing with music for five years, and uh, I just had started this choir accompanist job at a local high school. And a little side note at Unity, we talk about we talk about uh, law of attraction um, and writing down our dreams and what we want. Um, later, I would go on to find some writings from 10th grade where one of my dreams was to become an accompanist for an awesome choir. <laughs> and that had happened that year. And then that's always fun to go back over, you know, old dreams and goals and go, oh my gosh, I have that. Or this just happened within the last year for me and that's been happening a lot lately. And hope is all a part of that. So one day in this new choir accompanist job, one of the choir teachers came to me and brought me a piece of music and said, hey, would you mind filing this? It'll go in this cabinet. Whatever he said after that, I didn't hear him because I looked at that music and I saw the words, cold are the people. And I went, <laughs> this is the song. I had tried to search for it on the internet. Nothing I had done helped me find the song. Um, we didn't have Google yet. I had to use other search engines. Um, so that, that stopped me in my track 17 years after 10th grade. And so by that time, I, in the subsequent years, I was able to connect with the composer. The composer's name is Daniel Cantor. And over the years, he has updated a website with more and more information about this special song that he wrote. And he wrote it. Here's a little bit of his story. He wrote it in college in 1981. And he went to college at the College of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Now, this is six years prior to when we were singing it in high school. So he wrote it at a time when he realized he was losing touch with why he had chosen music as a degree path. And at that time, it was impractical, it was irresponsible of him to spend time composing 
um, as a music major and as a piano major, all of his time and spare time and extra time uh, would have been spent practicing piano. But, and I'll, I'll get to a quote later on that speaks to, as he looks back, why it made sense and why he was compelled to compose when he should have been practicing the piano. So, he struggled. Um, he had various iterations of it. He struggled with the melody, the music, and then the lyrics. And uh, one thing he says on his website when he tells his story is, One's art speaks first to oneself, as I would learn over the years. My need for a message of hope, which would eventually come through in the second draft of the lyrics. End quote. So Daniel got recruited to work in music ministry at his campus church. He got recruited by a man named Rob, who led the music ministry and the choir and all of the music program there, Rob accidentally became a mentor. He gave him lots of feedback to tweak the piece, and uh, he he gave some feedback about the lyrics he and the text he went with, which, with, which just were not working. And he encouraged Daniel to lean heavier into Advent. So eventually, he came out with a finished product, but. Christmas was upon them, and they were not able to perform the piece that year. So the following year, now we're in Christmas of 1982, this mentor, Rob, conducted the choir singing that piece. And then the final verse, when they added the familiar Christmas tune, this mentor had tears in his eyes. This was a very special moment. So a year later, 1983, Daniel had his music degree. He's trying to figure out what to do with it and where to go, what direction to take. And he got something in the mail from a company called GIA Publications. So apparently his mentor, Rob, had sent Daniel's piece off to be published. And this thing Daniel got in the mail was offering him a contract and his piece was indeed published. So, four years after that, I was in 10th grade learning this new piece of music. Um, for a choir piece, four years is, is very new, very young. And so, uh, one of my fears when I went back to look for it is it was so new, I didn't know if it would find I would find it, I didn't know how popular it would be, but it became extremely popular. It became wildly successful. Other arrangements were made. Other composers contacted Daniel to say, can I do this with it? Can I, can I do that kind of arrangement? Um, it took, a, took on a life all its own, and it found its way around the world. So, going back to this school I worked at and found this choir accompanist job, a name kept coming up at the school of a former accompanist, the first accompanist that had worked with the choir director who was my boss. And that name was Cat Kesey. Now, a lot of you know Cat Kesey. Cat Kesey was the music director at Unity for many years. And it was during that time that I worked at that school that I found Unity. So when I saw her name in the bulletin, I knew this was the same person I had been hearing about at the school and hearing great things about. And I really enjoyed her music. Um, I eventually, one Sunday, introduced myself to her. And uh, she knew that I played the piano and accompanied at the school she used to work at. And eventually she asked me to sub here and there. Now a gentleman working with her at that time that she brought in and mentored also was John Wiseman. And um, so in the years following, um, I did a little bit of subbing for her at the piano or for song leading. Eventually, I became a regular part of the music team. Um, and then when she retired, I went on to work well, with John and some other wonderful musicians we've had here at Unity. But Kat mentored me on song leading, musicianship. She taught me how to read lead sheets. 
which is a whole other skill that not all pianists have, and it definitely gets you out of your comfort zone. It's uh, reading names of chords and knowing what chords to play and a little bit of uh, improvisation. And that's really scary if you've always been reading note for note from a page. So she got me to stretch out of my comfort zone and help me grow as a professional musician. Um, everything that I've done in, this, in the Michiana area since then in music stemmed from her taking me to an audition or passing along my number or spreading the word somehow um, to get me into different things. Everything from LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra to South Bend Chamber Singers, which led me to be fortunate enough to sing in mass choirs at Carnegie Hall a couple times. Um, just some amazing experiences. And so, and we will get to a point at the end. Uh, the point so far is what one person's hope can do is lead to another thing and another thing. I may not, I might not even be standing here today and be involved with unity if all of these things had not happened. So, as for the lost song, well, we've actually done that song here at Unity. The name of the song is Night of Silence, and the Christmas song that enters into the final verse is Silent Night. And that's another song that was written when hope was needed. If you ever uh, have the chance to research why Silent Night was written, that's another story. And uh, the name of two songs that go together, two separate melodies like that, is called a quadlibet. Uh, Daniel Cantor didn't even know that word when he wrote Night of Silence, but um, another example of a quadlibet might be um, It's a Small World After All, so you can sing It's a World of Laughter, a World of Fun, and then you can actually sing the chorus along with that at the same time. It's a small world after all. Uh, so that's a simple example. Um, so you may have heard us do this piece. We've done it. I've done it with myself at the piano. Um, Sharon Bain, one of our wonderful guest soloists, has sung the verses of Night of Silence. And then John on a flute has uh, come into that final verse playing Silent Night on his flute. Um, and it's just, it's just really magical. And I don't know if it'll work to do it this year. I know with, uh, with COVID, things are, um, definitely challenging and different. And we've had to, to make certain accommodations, um, around, uh, copyright things and everything else. Um, I want to quote a couple more things that Daniel Cantor says as he tells his story of writing Night of Silence. He says, As I look back at the year <clears throat> I composed Night of Silence, I'm struck that one of my most successful pieces would be produced in the thin margins of a busy college semester. There were some who argued I shouldn't have been spending any time composing. Why hadn't I been practicing piano instead? But when logic dictated I had a responsibility to more pressing academic concerns, I listened to my heart. I followed an inner voice that guided me to a composition that would transcend virtually everything else I would accomplish while at St. Thomas. He then goes on to say, um, towards the end of him sharing his story, is he says, Yes, Advent is about preparation and anticipation but it is also about making room for the new. When I composed Night of Silence, I cleared a space for what now feels like a fountain that never runs dry. I continue to be filled by connections with amazing people and the blessings of new and surprising experiences. That is the power of Advent. It first calls us to a spiritual presence grounded in quiet emptiness and expectant hope and then asks us to trust in this silence. Night of Silence is my expression of this. Beginning in the darkness, it guides us to that moment when dawn breaks 
and a morning of endless possibility awaits. You can read the full story. That's the end. That's the end of the quote right there. You can read the full story of the song or listen to the song at nightofsilence.com. So the point of all this is our stories of hope are intertwined. We give others hope. Others give us hope. Giving someone hope is like using your candle to light theirs. No one has any less hope by giving some to someone else. Encourage, I'd encourage you to reflect on some times that you have given or received hope and, and think on those moments and get in the feeling place of that. Maybe start a journal or start a dialogue with a friend. Um, use a creative outlet. I know that John and Kevin have written songs to use at uh, our Unity services, especially lately during the pandemic and since we started going live. Maybe start a social media post about hope. Maybe put something in the comments here on the live feed. Um, I highly recommend watching the Wonder Woman movie. Um, that original movie, not the 1984, but the one that came out about three years ago. Big, big message of hope in that movie. And it's entertaining. You're going to be with family this weekend, hopefully, and over the next few weeks for the holidays. Highly recommend the Wonder Woman movie. She had hope in the human race when humans had given up on ourselves. And here's the final quote. Where there's life, there's hope. I don't know who said it originally, but the person who said it says it to me all the time is my own father. And he's quoting his grandfather saying it. So my great-grandfather, who passed away before I was born, passed it along to my father who passes it to me regularly as I'm passing it to you today. I hope this message stirs something in your heart and soul today as we begin the Advent season. Much love to you and have a wonderful day. Wow. So that was really, really good to see uh, Miss Melanie and what a wonderful message um, and I had forgotten that she was a Wonder Woman fan and and I yeah that's she's one of my heroes um, I do encourage you to watch that movie there's there's a lot of meaning to that so um, anyway thank you Miss Melanie um, okay so happenings and events and stuff going on um, so Sandy is on vacation right now but she'll be back um, the midweek class is continuing um, and it's part two, Exploring the Truth Principles. Um, and it's resuming this week. Um, it takes place on when, it'll take place on Wednesday the 15th. Um, it is a Zoom class, um, and it meets from 6 to 7.30. Um, any, you can come at any, within any session. You don't have to have been going all along. Um, and Susan sends out the uh, Zoom link on Wednesday, and it's also on our app and the uh, Facebook event. So reading the materials for the class posted online each week uh, is helpful and that can be accessed from the website, our app, or Facebook event. Um, Christmas poinsettias. Today is the last day to order uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful three-bloomed plant Christmas poinsettia. It's an eight-inch pot for $15. You can do it in honor or in memory of a loved one, and then it will decorate our uh, platform for Christmas. And you can then take it home um, on Christmas Eve after our Christmas Eve service, or you can donate it um, to someone else that might need it or enjoy it. Um, so see Su Susan has forms out um, in the lobby, or you can also uh, go onto our website and purchase them right from the website. Um, it's that time of year. We need memberships, recommitments for the year 2022. Oh, that sounds weird saying that, right? <laughs> um, so this is in accordance with our bylaws um, and for best practices for not-for-profit corporations. Um, each of our member of Unity Michiana are asked to reaffirm their membership status on an annual basis. Um, you can remove you can renew that membership by filling out a form in the foyer by going to our website or the app um, or by calling the office and talking with Susan. Um, and please remember that this must be done by December 31st of 2021 
in order for each and everyone to be a member in good standing to vote at our annual meeting, um, which is held in 2022 of February. So uh, now um, is the time for our love offering. And um, we are grateful, we are blessed. Our doors are open, our heat is on. We have special events, we have special people coming to speak, we have special musicians, and all that is being funded solely by what you give to us. And we are eternally, speaking from the board, we are eternally grateful. So. Um, you can give today. There's a basket in the back. Again, I, the website, the app, there's the, the phone app is fabulous. There's just a little button. You just go and you can hit donate. You can also set it up for a recurring, so then you don't have to think about it anymore. And that's a great way to do it, too. So I invite you to hold your love offering in your hand as Sandy speaks the infinity circle. I love this. And let's say our affirmation together. With God as my source of infinite supply, I give and receive with gratitude and thanksgiving. Hmm. Mm. We bless these love offerings that have been bestowed upon us, knowing that it's for the higher purpose, knowing that it serves us all. We are forever grateful. Amen. And now I join you. Now I ask you to join us and live stream. You can stand up if you want. Uh, join us in the peace song and the prayer for protection. Let there be peace on earth, then let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be with God our Creator. Family, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be a moment now. With every step I take, let this be our solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace and harmony. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. That's Thank you, everyone. <laughs>